Hey Richie, Tom, I think it's dangerous for regulators to be reporting on housing prices as though the market is currently functioning. I'd suggest we classify the market as paused and treat the prices observed before the pause as the current prices, like how equity markets operate, but on a larger scale. Real estate agents cannot operate normally, so paused would be a fair classification. We should also tell private sector data providers to follow this rule. If people start mistakenly thinking that we're experiencing a housing market crash, it's not going to help things. Cheers, Nick. That was a recently declassified email sent by Reserve Bank of Australia economist Nick Garvin on April 1st this year. Perhaps it was a joke. Perhaps the housing market is A-OK. -okay. But recent news reports don't seem to think so. They've jumped on the release of these highly classified documents obtained under a Freedom of Information request by the ABC. I decided to check it out for myself and went to the RBA's Freedom of Information Disclosure Log. Clicking on this first one here, I was met with this screen. Summary of Request – Documents since 9th of March 2020 about the impact of COVID-19 on the residential housing market and or house prices in Australia. I recommend taking a look at it for yourself, it makes for one interesting read. I especially like that at one point, these documents were classified as highly restricted. Not anymore. From the Assistant Governor's speaking notes from May 2020 under Dwelling Investment, they wrote, It's become clear that there has been a big drop-off in demand for new housing. Aside from the difficulties of actually inspecting and selling houses, people have other things on their mind than buying a home. They might be worried about their job security. Our liaison contacts are saying that contracts are being cancelled, early stage buyer interest is very weak, and the pipeline is emptying. Regarding housing price growth and turnover, they wrote, Demand for new housing has declined substantially since mid-March and is expected to decrease further. There have been sharp falls in sales, inquiries and foot traffic following the introduction of stricter containment measures. Contacts have also reported increases in contract cancellation rates, particularly for new detached houses and greenfield land. This graph on housing price forecasts is pretty interesting. In the February SMP, the Statement on Monetary Policy, the RBA were expecting house prices to grow and grow and grow. But now, their baseline scenario is suggesting at least a 7% fall, with their downside scenario suggesting that house prices could potentially slump by up to 15%. From May 20th, CoreLogic have suspended the publication of their daily hedonic home value index. They claim that this is due to the evolving COVID-19 situation, and outright deny any involvement from the RBA. Head of Research Tim Lawless stated that, We received no correspondence from any of our clients asking for our market-facing indicators to be removed from publication. The decision to remove the daily index series from publication on the CoreLogic website was a cautionary move made due to concerns about the potential for volatility in the daily series at a time when sales activity had fallen by around one-third in a month. This was a prudent decision at a time when sales observations had fallen sharply. What do you think? Is everybody above board here? Or are they trying to cover up the true nature of the housing price slump? In other news, university fees are set for a bit of a shake-up. Apparently, humanities degrees will cost more than double what they do now, being lumped into the same category as law and commerce degrees. That means if you want to study visual arts or anthropology, expect it to cost you about $45,000 to get your degree. However, some fees will be reduced. Agriculture and maths will be reduced by 62%. Teaching, nursing, clinical psychology, English and languages degrees will go down by about 46%. Science, health, architecture, IT and engineering are set for a 20% reduction, while medicine and dentistry will remain unchanged. That is, prohibitively expensive. Anyway, that's it for me. Cheers!